Hi everyone, let's talk about the Task Editor tab in Labvanced. So right now I am looking at the Study Design tab, and this is where I've got all of my tasks, my blocks, sessions, and groups. Moving to this left sidebar here, if I mouse over, this little bar pops up, and this is where you find the Task Editor tab. I can get to it by either clicking here, or by clicking Open on any one of these tasks. If I just click on the Task Editor tab from the Study Design tab, you see it flips over and it just takes me to the first task. So let's walk through all the different things here on the Task Editor tab. This is where you're going to be working on the individual tasks in your study. So this is where all of your edits are made. We'll start on the left and move our way to the right. First, we've got our Settings menus. Up here next to task, this is where you can pick which task you want to work on. The main settings menu is where you can choose to activate your trials, which just means that the trials are ready to go and be part of the experiment. You can also change the language. Now this menu only populates with more languages if you've added more languages in the translate tab. Next we have the display settings menu. And this is where you can choose your display mode. Um, so this would be if in study settings you've changed the size of the screen that's allowed. You can fix that here. And you can choose to show or hide the initial countdown. This is that little starting in 3, 2, 1 um, countdown that happens before every task. But if you don't want to use that, you can just turn it off. Next, we have the randomization menu. I will link the video that talks about randomization here because this menu has a lot of options. So please go see that video if you have questions. Finally, we have the physical signals menu. This is where you can enable head tracking and or eye tracking in this task. Moving on to the factor. This is where you can populate um, your study with different factors and levels. So this is how we traditionally do our randomization. Each level can have its own versions of your trials. Um, and then factors are the way that we cross to form conditions. So let me explain that a little bit here. Let's say I wanted factor one to be image. And let's say I add another factor that's gonna be called position. Okay. So what happens now is we get different conditions. So condition one is when level one is in the position called level one, and so on and so forth. If I add a second level to position, you see that I suddenly get more conditions. So in this quick little example, this would be how you can change where an image is located on the frame, depending on what you've specified. So if I've got three different images and each of those three images can either be on the left or the right, for example, that's why I have six conditions. So that's a quick overview of the factor tree and then the resulting trials and conditions window. Again, we have more information on this in the documentation. Moving on to the center of the tab, this is where we have the canvas frame or a page frame if that's what you're choosing to edit. This frame is where you can add all of our different objects, and we have them sorted into categories here. Once you pick the category you want, you just click on it and click the object to add it to the frame. Okay? By default, you have a set of instructions when you first open any new task. These instructions explain that factor tree and trials and conditions window that I just went over. So please make sure you read these. They're also located in our text documentation if you need to check back. Down here, we've got the trial timeline, and this just shows the order of the frames. Let's say you've added multiple frames. You can see them and edit them here. Over here in frame settings, this is where you can change things like frame duration, the background color, the size, and you can choose to show or hide the mouse. When you click the check mark next to hide mouse, it means that the participant will not see their little mouse icon during the frame. And that can be different for each frame. Finally, all the way to the right, we have three different tabs here. 
the objects tab is where you will see the properties and the name of any objects you've added to your frame. For this option here, Let's say you have lots of objects on the same frame, and as you're moving them around, you want to make sure that one or more don't get moved. You can lock their position with this little padlock icon. Or if you're playing around with visibility, clicking this eye icon turns it temporarily invisible to you as the editor. That doesn't affect the visibility um, that the participant sees. That would be this option down here. Okay? You can also copy or delete certain objects. The events tab is where you can see any events that you've created for this frame. You can add frame events or trial events. So the frame event only happens on the frame that you're editing, whereas a trial event happens on every single frame in this trial. Finally, we have the variables tab, and this is where you can see any variables that you've added to your frame. So for example, one of the variables I have is actually my factor here. Those are going to be variables by default, and it shows how many levels that factor has. I also have that second factor I added and that checkbox that I deleted. If you notice, when I added that checkbox to the frame, I deleted it so it doesn't appear in objects, but the variable is still present, but it's categorized as unused. The reason we do this is so that if you accidentally delete a variable from your experiment, you can get it back and you can see that there was a variable you deleted. So that's kind of one of our fail safe options as you're editing your study. So this is a quick overview of the task editor tab and I hope this video was helpful.